You know, it seems like every video I do, I'm hot and sweaty. And I guess today is no exception. So that's kind of what it's like being in Central Texas where it's 100 degrees every day for months on end. But anyway, I get sidetracked. So the purpose of this, this video is to discuss mowing your yard better. And to me, better is faster. You know, you can always try to push your mower faster, but I really wanted to spend some time thinking about how to actually mow it faster and not just go faster. So I should preface this by saying I'm an industrial engineer by training. And so everything I do, I spend considerable time thinking, how could I do this better? How could I be more efficient? How could I remove non-value added tasks? Which to anybody who's an industrial engineer out there, a non-value added task is, is a common term that you would recognize. So I'm trying to eliminate non-value added tasks. And so this is my video on removal of the non-value added task in your mowing. So, which by the way, I've been doing some closed captioning on my videos. I say so a lot. And another thing I'd frequently do is I have ridiculously long run on sentences. I will just put an and in there and keep going. Personal flaw, I guess. But so purpose of this video, I'm going to walk you through, I have a PowerPoint presentation. Again, I can't help myself. So I will put some video in and I'll show you how I did my yard, how I talked about it, or I talked about how I thought about it, and I'll talk you through how I came about this better way of mowing your yard. And it may not work for everybody, I'll put that caveat out there, but it works for me. And I've actually got some numbers in the end to back it up. So I'm going to work on doing a voiceover here later, so hopefully I can have voice over my video, and then I will do a video of my uh, screen capture of my PowerPoint presentation. So I will completely nerd out for about the next 10 minutes or so for y'all. So here we go. This is what I came up with. So I sat down and I, like I said, I nerded out for a while. And I came up with all the different ways I've mown my yard and other people's yard. I, I've, over, over the years, I've mowed lots of people's yards. I've mown my yard, my parents' yard, my grandparents' yard. I actually got paid whenever I was in high school and, and through college to mow people's yards. And so I've mowed a lot of yards. And so basically you can come up with, I've come up with three different methods that a lot of people use to mow their yards. So there's the outside to in, there's the back and forth with a three point turn, and then there's this new way that I came up with. It may not be brand spanking new, but I'm saying it's the most efficient way for rectangular yards anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the different ways that I've mown yards and I've seen people mow yards and I still see people mow yards this way. My neighbor does the outside to in. He's got a yard very similar to mine and he does the outside to in. The grounds crew that mows the home next to me, my neighbor's home on the other side, they do the back and forth with a three point turn. And so let me walk you through this. I'll walk you through this and as I walk you through, I'll, I'll kind of talk you through some of the things that I saw. So first of all, here's the outside to end. So this is kind of a model. I, I don't have the trees in there, but this is kind of a model drawing of my home. I have, we have the street, we have sidewalk, 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 and the driveway. So for me, I have this large section and this large section. The problem with it is I have these little 
this little side part over here. And I have a little side part over here, but it doesn't really matter because you mow over it twice and you're done. But for me, whenever I start looking at it, the first thing you want to do is look for your longest axis. Okay, that's number one. Look for the longest axis. For me, interestingly enough, it's a left to right longest axis. I just mow over the sidewalk and don't think anything about it. This left to right is my longest axis. So that's what I would do whenever I started optimizing. But as I look at the outside the end, this is what it looks like. So we start, you just go outside the end. And you can do this all the way across if you want. I just looked at it as a per section outside the end. There's really no different outside the end all the way around or outside the end um, per section. Eh, you might save a little bit of time. But as I, start, as I started looking at this, whenever I started looking at this, the problem that came up to me is there's a lot of arrows. And so every time you see an arrow going in a different direction, that is a turn. And so for the engineer in me, I sat down and I started realizing, and I started analyzing, the turns are my non-value added activities. So look at all those turns I had to make in the outside the end method. So as I start looking just for my optimization sequence, I go from that to my outside the end, from my outside the end method to the longest axis method. So I have my longest axis. The problem with going longest axis, I'm just like an idiot, I'm pointing on the screen and you can't see me. But the problem with the longest axis is I have these two little sections over here that require a lot of turns. So even if I go the longest axis for three quarters, four fifths of my yard, I still have these sections over here that require lots of turns. So if we just take a look at the longest axis method, you get it done. It goes faster, you have fewer turns. So already you're improved over the outside the end method. You're minimizing your turns. So then I put in here, if I switch, okay, for me, if I go from that longest axis, it was actually more beneficial to me in my yard because I had these sections here that require so many turns. It's actually more beneficial to me to turn my longest axis 90 degrees. So instead of going left to right, I go up and down. Okay, as you saw in the previous little time lapse clip. So as I look at it, a lot of people do this, and this is what most of the people that I see do, whether they have a push mower or a riding lawnmower. And I will say a push mower is probably a little bit different. For me, you saw in the video, I have a, a riding mower because I mow my yard and I have a half acre in the back and I mow my neighbor's yard that has a little bit over a half acre total. And so it's beneficial to me to have a riding lawnmower. It is funny though, I used to have a push mower and somebody that's and I have a little over a half acre total and somebody would say do you push mow that whole thing I said yep I push mow a half acre 21 inches at a time so this is what a lot of people do and again I see the grounds crews next to me I see my neighbor across the way I see actually both neighbors directly across from me mow this way with the longest axis but a three-point turn. And what I mean by a three-point turn is when you get down to the end you stop and you turn around and you mow back along the exact same line that you just mowed. So you had to do a little three-point turn to get going the exact same way. Or I'm sorry not the exact same way, but down the exact same line on 180 degrees. So that's again this is my little layout of my house and this is what the longest axis but with three point turns looks like. So I come in this way, turn 90, turn 180, turn 180, turn 180. So I have all these 180 degree turns. Again, I'm mowing along my long axis. So it, for me, is very beneficial because I get rid of the need to turn in these little sections up here that required 
so many little turns. So I have these sections covered now. But the problem with that was is I come down here, I turn, oops, sorry, I turn 180 degrees, I get here, I turn 180 degrees, 180, 180. So back and forth and back and forth and back and forth every single time requiring a 180 degree turn. So that was the way I used to mow. But the problem is I sat down and again, I nerded out. I started calculating how much time I was taking to actually make my turns. And I'll show you the numbers here in a minute, but those turns, you don't really think anything about them, but those turns really add up if when you do so many of them. So this is what I came up with. You just do a continuous turn. You don't ever mow right along the exact same line. You just turn in a normal radius for whatever your mower is, and you mow the next time the next unmown spot. So what this does is it eliminates the three-point turn, which for me, and I, I have a, let's see, a John Deere 130D, and it has a hydrostatic transmission. So I, I can make pretty fast turns, but I was averaging about seven and 7.7, 7, seven, all the way up to eight seconds per turn. And so that really added up for me. And so whenever I do that continuous turn, like you saw me doing the video, and I'll put another one here at the end of me mowing my neighbor's yard, I eliminate all those turns. I eliminate all the three-point turns going 180 degrees, and I'm just mowing when other people are turning. So here's what my continuous turn method looks like. So I come in, and I just turn, and I just keep mowing. I'm not making any drastic turns. I'm just mowing where there's an unmowed spot. Same for both sides. I come in, I just turn, and I just, I'm going 180 degrees, but I'm not doing it in a method that requires me to do an actual three-point turn. So, whenever you look at that, you may not think it's a dramatic change. Just wait till the end and I'll show you some numbers. So here's what it is in my neighbor's yard. So here's the outside-to-end -the method in my neighbor's yard. Again, He's got very similar yard to me. It's two sections, but he doesn't have this offset like I do. He just has a fence that goes into his backyard. So it's a lot easier to find the long axis and mow along the longest axis for him. For him, it's not a north and south. It's an east and west. It's up right to left. So that longest axis is that right to left. Which again, here as you see, on these outside the end method, it's a lot of turns. You're wasting a lot of time turning. And so if you just go to the longest axis method with the three point turns for him, look how much time you save by not turning 50 or 100 times. But you're still doing a three point turn at every end just so you can get a complete line there. Okay, So let's take a look at it with continuous turns, what it looks like. Still going the long axis, long axis. For him, it's a right to left. But you're just mowing when you normal people would be turning on those three-point turns. So, so whenever you take a look at the numbers, here's what you get. And this is done over a couple of weeks for me. So I did a couple of weeks outside in, a couple of weeks three point, and a couple of weeks continuous. So whenever I did the outside in for my yard, it took me almost 2,500 seconds a couple of times. I averaged out to about 2,400. My neighbor's yard averaged out to about 1,700. Just doing the long axis, cutting it down to a three point turn on the long axis, my yard went down to 900 seconds. My neighbor's yard went down to about 900 seconds. Whenever we went from the longest axis three-point turn to the longest axis continuous, mine dropped down to 707, and my neighbor's dropped down to 777. So whenever you look at this, Going from outside to end to continuous was a 71% reduction for me. 
the 54% reduction for my neighbor. Going outside just down to the long axis with a three point turn every time it was a 62% reduction for me and a 40%, 46% reduction for my neighbor. Even going between the two long axis methods, you're still wasting so much time on the turns. I still save a 22% reduction going from the three point turn longest axis to the continuous. My neighbor's was about 15. So you can see that is a dramatic improvement going from the outside to end to either one of the two longest axis methods. Even within the longest axis methods, again, I didn't completely nerd out and run statistical tests on it, but 22% reduction for me is good enough to say that it's a strong likelihood of significance. Golly, I really did just nerd out on that one for a second. But longest axis method is great. Eliminating turns is even better. Mm -hmm.